Day one of building a giant Lego city in 30 days, so I can flood it. Today my goal was to lay out the roads and the base plates for the city. To start, I built up the main road and added a few crosswalks. That way when the water hits the city, it'll hopefully go all the way through and destroy everything. Because when the city's complete, I'm going to flood it with 300 gallons of water, which to a Lego minifigure is basically equivalent to a tsunami wave. And you might be wondering why I'm putting in all this work just to destroy everything, and it's genuinely just because I think it'll look cool. I added more base plates for the buildings, most of which don't actually fit on this table. My plan is to tile around the building so it looks more like sidewalks later, because gray Lego base plates are super expensive. Then I created a map of what buildings I want in my city and started making outlines for them, using different colors of bricks to represent different places. I integrated Technic bricks and pins into these outlines to make the entire city modular so you can take it apart and snap it together in a different variation. The layout for the city is 7 base plates wide and 10 base plates long, which is around 100 by 70 inches. So this project, when completed, will be the biggest thing I've ever built. I'm a little nervous. Tomorrow I'm going to design the first building and the countdown will begin for Lego Doomsday. Make sure you follow so you don't miss day 2. Building a Lego city in 30 days so I can flood it. Day 2. Today I built an apartment building so I can start populating the city. I started by building up a foundation using 2x4 bricks and plates to raise it up. Then I worked on designing the sweet looking exterior using 1x2 profile bricks, which are those little bricks that look like real ones. I added in some tan pillars to give it more depth, and then I added some windows, which I had to individually unwrap because I bought them from Lego in bulk, but that's fine because, you know, I only bought like a thousand. This being like my first building ever, it took a few tries to get the design for the first floor, but once I did, I just duplicated it two more times to make it three stories tall. I made the third floor into a modern art gallery, using some really weird Lego stickers, and the first floor separates into two spacious apartments. I added some custom furniture like these toilets and sinks that look like they actually have water in them, kind of like the 300 gallons of water I plan to flood this city with on day 30. Make sure you guys are following so you don't miss it, because it's gonna be insane. Finally, I added the building into the city using some tiles to blend it in. This build took literally all of day two, and I'm starting to realize this project might be harder than I thought. Tomorrow I'm building a popular electronics store, which the flood is absolutely gonna ruin, so make sure you follow so you don't miss day three. I'm building a Lego city in 30 days so I can flood it, and today was day 3. Today I decided it's looking pretty blank in my city, so I wanted to build an apple store to get the economy booming. Also, because I'm an apple connoisseur, not the actual fruit, I don't eat those. I started by picking a spot for it in Brick Square, and I built up a one plate high foundation so it would be super sturdy. I wanted this building to be really posh and have glass walls, so I started building up the front using 6x6 six six glass panels, laid on their side and connected with snot bricks. And I don't want to get ahead of myself here, I know it's only day 3, but I feel like I'm getting better at buildings already. I mean, just look at it. Next, I built up the back wall out of white and tan pieces, and added some more snot so I could attach some displays later. I looked at a bunch of pictures of Apple stores and all of them have like these wooden tables, so I decided to rebuild those and put tiles around them and stick them on the floor. I even added these cool lights above the displays. Now to fill it with the goods. I populated the store with laptops, computers, iPhones, iPads, everything a minifigure might want. Then I built the roof using a wedge plate on the front and some clear bricks on the sides to match the walls. Then all I had to do was add the Apple logo, which is basically just a sticker I got from an old iPhone case, and put it in my Lego city so I could tile it in and add minifigures. And finally, I have an Apple store. Make sure you follow so you don't miss the walls caving in when it floods, because they probably will. Building a Lego city in 30 days so I can flood it. Day 4. Today I wanted to build a Lego pool house for my city to make everyone happy. Because that's what it's all about, happiness. Am I right? I already had an area plotted out for the pool house behind the Apple store, so I pulled out the base plates and got to work. I wanted to build two pools and make this entire thing modular so it could come apart. So I laid out the foundation for the building and started working on a tile pattern to make it look like an actual pool. Which raised the floor just enough so I could lay down a couple blue plates and put some clear tiles over it to make it look like water. Next I wanted to build a nice fence around the pool to keep it nice and private. So I built up some nice brick fences using antenna pieces in between between to make it look like steel. I think this turned out really nice and didn't look too much like prison, so that's nice. Wow, I should stop saying nice. I started building up the house using some cool textured panels, and then I built a maintenance shed which houses a brick built water pump. I added some sinks and toilets to the main building, which look like every pool house ever. Like, seriously, what's with the gray toilets in these places? Then I just had to build up the roof using tan bricks and place it into the city. It's kind of hanging off the edge because this table isn't quite big enough, but when we actually flood this thing with 300 gallons of water, we'll attach all the areas on the sides and it'll be huge. Tomorrow I'm building a popular YouTuber's restaurant, and I'll let you guys guess what it is in the comments. Make sure you follow for day five. Day 5 of building my Lego city so I can flood it. Today I wanted to build a Mr. Beast burger. Not the actual burger, of course. I mean the restaurant. But I'm gonna build burgers for the inside. I already had a place in my city marked out for this across from the pool house, so I grabbed the base plate and got to work. For reference, I looked at Mr. Beast's old thumbnail and the restaurant he actually made in the video and started building up the walls using 1x2 masonry bricks. Once I got the bricks built up, I added some pink and blue highlights to the front, which I plan to put decals on later. Then I assembled a bunch of white windows, which meant I had to individually unwrap every one of them. And you're probably thinking, this looks easy, but when I have to build a skyscraper later in the month, this is gonna take me out hours just to unwrap the windows. I built up the roof using a few plates, and then I went to Photoshop so I can make some custom Lego stickers to put on it. For the Mr. Beast logo, I even used a picture of my Lego Mr. Beast logo I built. I also spelled free food with one E, but then I went back to put in the other E. So. <laughs> Next, I filled the interior with a bunch of tiles and plates so I could build and attach the furniture. I even built a bunch of custom Mr. Beast burgers so I could fill the restaurant. I think this build actually turned out really well, and I'm gonna be super sad to see it when the city gets flooded, because this is probably my favorite so far. And with that, day five comes to a close, and we are one day closer to flooding the city. Make sure you follow so you don't miss day six. Another beautiful day building my Lego city.
so I can flood it with 300 gallons of water. Today I decided to sit back, relax, and build some houses, because my city it needs places for people to stay. The apartment building we built is not enough anymore. I had already plotted out some areas for houses right back here in the corner, so I grabbed the base plates and got to work. I built two of these L-shaped houses with garages, and one of them I even furnished with different furniture. I even moved in one of the characters' brick from the apartment building. I had this Lego creator set I wanted to turn into a house, but the back was kind of open, so I used some white bricks and windows and kind of built up the back, and this actually turned out really nice and works really well. For the fourth house, I wanted to go with a brownstone apartment building feel. So I built up a dark gray base mixing in some masonry bricks and then used dark red, one of my favorite Lego colors, to build up the first portion of the house. For the second part I used some dark tan just to give it some variation and this one turned out really really good. For the fifth house I actually started with the roof because I had to build it upside down. When I was building the other houses I actually ran out of the 2x2 two two slopes so I had to use inverted ones which actually worked out super well. Honestly these houses I'm really gonna be sad to see the flood destroy but also it's gonna be pretty cool. Tomorrow we're back to building full scale so make sure you follow so you don't miss day 7. Building a Lego city in 30 days so I can flood it. Day 7. Today I wanted to build a prison for all the bad people of this fine city. Hey! It's a bit of an oxymoron, but let's go with it. I started by building up the police station using the blue and white color scheme LEGO uses in all their city sets. And I added an office for the chief of police and some simple furniture to make it realistic. I also added some Technic pins into the back of this so I could connect it to the prison. I figured this prison would be like entirely gray, so I just built it up with gray bricks. Then I built up some jail amenities, like a toilet, a sink, a really comfortable bed. And then I added in the worst of the worst of this LEGO city, the prisoners. But I want to give the prisoners a place to work out, so I built up a courtyard using some 6x6 six gray tiles for the floor and some really tall walls with bar antennas at the top to make it look like jail. And I gave them some stuff to do, like a basketball hoop and some barbells, and then I added some security cameras so the guards could keep watch. We don't want them breaking out with a spoon or anything. <laughs> Hopefully none of these guys escape when the flood hits. For the roofs, I connected some simple 16x16 16 16 plates and built up a helicopter pad on top of the main prison. Just like that, the prison was done and I could add it into my LEGO city. I think it turned out really well. Tomorrow we're going to build a store, so make sure you follow for day 8. Building a LEGO city in 30 days so I can flood it. Day 8. Today I wanted to build a store. I had a place plotted out for the store right behind the apartment building, so I grabbed the base plates and got to work. I had to build this building up in two parts so I could take half of it off and it would fit on my table. I started by building up the walls as I usually do, using some masonry bricks to give it some cool details on the front. Then I added some clear doors and windows to let some natural light in. I came up with this genius name for the store, which was Partmark, and I made the super cool brick built logo for it. Unfortunately, I forgot to look up if the name was already taken before I recorded. <laughs> so for now, we're just gonna call it Art Mart. Next, I added the roof by connecting some 16 by 16 plates. And this is when I realized I forgot to build it in two parts. And I used a bunch of overlapping bricks so I couldn't really break it in half. So I just had to roll with it. And I built up some details like two checkout stands, an ATM, a gumball machine, some Lego toys, a deli counter, a fresh produce market, produce that I stole from the Lego truck set, custom refrigerators, and a bread wrap. I even built a custom green dumpster for the back and a shopping cart. And it was finally finished. For now, I'm just gonna put it at an angle right behind the apartment building. But when we do the building next to this, we're gonna have to rotate something. <laughs> Comment down below what I should change the name of the store to. And make sure you follow so you don't miss day nine. Building a LEGO city in 30 days so I can flood it. Day 9. Today I wanted to build the first skyscraper. My plan is to build three skyscrapers for the city, and each one will have a different building technique so I can see which one will stand up the best against the 300 gallon tidal wave that's gonna hit the city. This first one is basically control because the technique I'm using is just overlapping bricks. So I built up the first floor with bricks and windows, and added some simple details like a desk and a cool glass table, and this cool elevator that doesn't actually work. I only detailed the bottom floor for this build just to give the illusion that people actually work here. So I continue to build up each level, basically just using the rule of thumb that every piece has to have two pieces is connecting to the top of it. I'm sure I missed some, but hey. Nobody's perfect, okay? Once I got high enough, I connected some plates and then turned it into a stepped building by making the structure smaller as I built it up. Then I very carefully added it into the city so I could detail it. While I was building, I made sure to connect some snot bricks so I could attach stuff later, like these billboards or this cool arch I built around the entrance. I actually really enjoyed building this because it was so tall I didn't have to bend over. I'm really curious how this first skyscraper is going to perform in the flood because it seems pretty sturdy from the outside, but 300 gallons of water is a lot. Tomorrow we're making a popular company's headquarters, so make sure you follow for day 10. Building a LEGO city in 30 days so I can flood it. Day 10. Today I wanted to build YouTube headquarters in LEGO. I wanted to design this to kind of look like the one in real life, but since I've never been there, I had to make up most of it. However, there were a bunch of aspects from the real building I wanted to add to this one, like the YouTube sign in the front with all the vines on it, using a custom paper sticker I printed out to make it look like the real thing. Also, I know there's a red slide inside YouTube headquarters, so I built that up too using red bricks and slopes. I also wanted to recreate one of the key features I've seen, which is this huge LED wall with the YouTube logo on it, so I used a bunch of one by one round tiles to make up the LED screen, and a couple bar and clip pieces to make up the logo. I decided to make the building in two parts with the server room on the left and the main building built out of clear red and gray pieces to make it feel more YouTube-y. So I installed the LED screen on the first floor along with the slide and a staircase for any people who don't want to take the slide backwards and I connected both buildings with a bridge. I even added a conference room and an office upstairs with standing desks to increase productivity. Honestly I really struggled through building this with the color scheme and everything but in the end I think it turned out pretty good. We'll see how it holds up against 300 gallons of water. Tomorrow I'm building City Park so make sure you follow for day 11. 
building a Lego city in 30 days so I can flood it. Day 11. Today I wanted to build a peaceful park inside Lego city. That way when the flood hits, I can play sad music and make a montage. So I started by grabbing up the base plates and building a nice fountain, which I then covered in clear tiles to make it look like water. I also made sure to build it so it could disconnect into four sections using Technic bricks so I could take it apart and fit it on my table. Next, I built up a pathway around the fountain using some jumper plates and gray tiles. Also, the jumper plates double as a place where you could put Lego minifigures. And then I decided I wanted to add trees, which means I need to build a bunch of custom ones because for some reason, Lego trees are like super small. So I built up the trunks at the bottom using some slopes and round pieces, and then I added some arches so I could stick the leaves on top to make them look organic. Basically, I just threw a bunch of slopes together. <laughs> at this point, it was really starting to come together and look like a park, not just a fountain in an empty field. <laughs> so I added it to the city and then started working on some of the cool details, like this cool bench I built, or this Lego swing set that actually works. I added everything in the park and then got sort of sad that I was gonna have to flood it with 300 gallons of water. But then I remembered that's why I'm doing this, to see how cool it's gonna be when the water hits the city in slow motion. But also kind of sad. Like, look at this, this is beautiful. Make sure you follow so you don't miss day 12. Building a Lego city in 30 days so I can flood it. Day 12. Today I wanted to build a school for my city. Actually, I didn't want to, but I ended up doing it anyway. I had an area plotted out right in front of the park for this, so I grabbed the base plates and started building up the foundation. I really had no idea what colors I wanted to use for this, and I was kind of limited since I'd already used a lot of the color combinations in the city. Eventually I settled on dark red and dark yellow, but we'll have to see how the walls hold up against the flood, because I didn't really have the pieces to overlap them. I also built up the roof using a sideways building technique, because I was running out of plates, and then I started building the inside with the hallway that has multicolored lockers and a water fountain. And then I got to work on building the four classrooms I wanted to include in the school, like science class, where all the cool kids hang out. And then I added math class with a whiteboard and some basic desks, and of course the clock that everyone thinks is so interesting. I also made a theater class with a super basic backdrop and a lifted stage, and I built a small gym class with an obstacle course just to give it some action. I'm actually so glad I persevered on this build, because the color scheme and the walls were just looking horrible when it started, but towards the end it really came together and I'm super proud of this one. I even added some lights on the inside of the roof to make it light up, which really helped a lot. Tomorrow I'm building a fancy restaurant, so make sure you follow so you don't miss day 13. Building a Lego city in 30 days so I can flood it. Day 13. Today I wanted to add a fancy restaurant to my Lego city with extremely expensive food to bring in all the rich investors from the Lego world. The place I wanted to put this was right next to the first skyscraper, so I grabbed the base plate and started building up the foundation. I really wanted to use these sand green bricks, so I made up some really cool archway designs and even added a little patio area where people can eat. And I wanted the inside of the building to be really fancy and romantic, so I used some dark red tiles and plates for the floor and I also built up a kitchen with a stove and a fridge. There's even a sink and cooking utensils on the walls for your boy Chef Richie. And Chef Richie makes some very expensive expensive dishes like the croissant, the hot dog, soup a la delicious. <laughs> I don't know. I added a roof and the awning to the outside and it was looking super fancy. I even added some Lego LEDs on the inside so it would light up in my city. I also built up a billboard for Crazy Kai's Brickling store because they provided me with some parts to restock my collection. Their link's in the pinned comment because they're pretty awesome. I'm really happy with how this build turned out and every time I build one of these great builds I get more sad that I gotta destroy it with the flood. But I think 300 gallons of water is gonna look pretty cool in slow motion so it's alright. Tomorrow I'm building a city bank so make sure you follow so you don't miss day 14. Building a Lego city in 30 days so I can flood it. Day 14. Today I wanted to build a bank for my city, because with all the rich investors and stuff moving into the city, they need somewhere to store their money. I guarantee you, this will be the safest bank ever. I started by building up four pillars out of these two by two round bricks, because I knew I wanted to have those at the front of the bank. Then I built a whole foundation that was one brick tall and started working on the windows. And I decided to call it Central Bank. I don't know if that's a real name, I just kind of came up with it for this. For the inside of the bank, I built up some simple furniture, like a front desk and some chairs, and I also added a coffee station with some paper cups and a coffee machine. Then I started building the bank vault. I built that using this cool 8x8 round tile, and I added some Technic on the back of the door to make it so you could actually open it. This is my favorite feature of the whole build, and it turned out really well. I also built up some gold ingots using jumper plates to make it look like there was more, and I did the same thing with cash, because I'm Lego broke. I also wanted to add a play feature into this that was inspired by the Daily Bugle set, so I actually built a breakaway wall into the side, in case any criminals escape from prison and want to break in and steal the gold. This thing seriously turned out sick, it's basically just how I imagined it, but we'll see how the vault withstands against the 300 gallons of water I'm gonna flood the city with. It's gonna be crazy, so make sure you follow for day 15. Building a Lego city in 30 days so I can flood it. Day 15. Today I wanted to build a toy factory for our character Brick, who's been using Shopify to grow his business selling toy robots, until he ran out of space. I had a place plotted out for this building right next to the pool, so I grabbed the base plates and started building up the walls. The main feature I wanted to include in this structure was a glass bridge that connected the two buildings, one of which was gonna be the toy factory, and the other one I was thinking I'd build into a toy shop. And while I was building, I discovered this really cool technique to make foggy windows using satin clear panels behind regular ones. I think this turned out super good, and it also gives some privacy to the factory. Once I had the main structure built up, I started adding the details to the inside of the factory, like a conveyor belt, a robot arm, and even a giant magnet for moving crates. I even added an office so Brick has tons of space to work on designing new robots so he can sell them with Shopify. Just like how you can use Shopify to sell your products online, or even in person using Shopify POS, which I also built into the storefront so Brick can sell his robots to people who walk in. Then I just added a bunch of toy robots and shelves and just cool details to make it look like an actual toy shop. And with that, the toy factory was complete. Personally, I love the colors I used for this one, but little does Brick know, the flood is coming, and now it's only 15 days away. So make sure you follow for day 16.
Building a Lego city in 30 days so I can flood it. Day 16. Today I'm gonna build a Lego zoo for the city. The place I had plotted out for this was right next to the city park. That way when the lions and bears escape, they'll feel right at home. So I started by building up a nice fence all the way around the property and I made sure to make it modular with some Technic pins since it was so big, because I knew this was gonna be a two day project. Today I'm building the exterior and the layout of the zoo and tomorrow we'll add in all the animals and the fine details. So I built up the front gate under this cool cabana shape for the gift shop and the admissions desk. And I use this wacky technique with mixel joints and stuff, but I think it worked out pretty good. I just wanted to give it like a natural organic shape. I knew I wanted to have a reptile enclosure with a bunch of habitats in it, so I built a custom building onto the side, then I built up a roof for the reptile enclosure and added some foliage on top of it to make it look nice. Then I just had to add all the various cages and enclosures where the animals could stay. I'm very sad, but also super pumped to actually flood the city with 300 gallons of water. I just can't believe we've come so far with only 15 days of building under our belt. Like we were over halfway through building this Lego city. It's insane. I finished building up all the animal enclosures and added tiles to the parking lot. And I'm pretty psyched about how this is looking so far. Tomorrow I'm gonna add all the animals and details to the zoo, so make sure you follow for day 17. Building a Lego city in 30 days so I can flood it. Day 17. Today I wanted to add animals and details to the Lego zoo we built yesterday. We bought a zoo, more like we built a zoo. I started by building up the lion enclosure. I made this cool rock formation in the back and added some grass, along with the food and watering bins. Also, huge shout out to TD Bricks for lending me a ton of these animal minifigures. Once I finished the lion enclosure, I started the next enclosure for some ostriches and added a bucket of hay, which honestly I didn't research, I just assumed that they eat hay. I could be completely wrong, they could be carnivores. I even added a little tree for shade up top. I think this one's pretty colorful, I like it. Next, I added details to the monkey cage, including branches and plants that hang off the wall. I built the outside of the cage yesterday and I just unfolded it and added the monkeys because you know monkey see monkey poo. Uh, that's the dumbest joke I've made in this video. Then I built up the reptile room with some habitats for like snakes and spiders and a scorpion and the final enclosure I wanted to build was one for the bears. I built a little river through it using clear tiles and then I added some rock work in the back because I assume these bears like to scratch on rocks. I also built up a simple gift shop in the front next to the ticket booth and I made these cool custom labels for the enclosures. I think the zoo turned out really good. It's probably my new favorite build. Tomorrow I'm building another skyscraper so make sure you follow so you don't miss day 18. Building a Lego city in 30 days so I can flood it. Day 18. Today I wanted to build another skyscraper. My plan is to build three skyscrapers for the city, and each one will be built using a different technique so I can see which one stands up the best against the flood. For the second one, I wanted to use vertical Technic beams to lock it together and see if it would make it stronger than the first. So I built up the base and integrated some Technic bricks into the bottom to hold up the beams. And then I decided to angle the beams on each floor using these special Technic connectors to make the building shaped like a DNA helix. In hindsight, this probably won't make the building very sturdy, but it does utilize vertical connectors. And once I got the idea in my head, I couldn't let go of it. it took a while to get the template for the stackable design, but once I figured it out, I just had to build up eight more so it'd be really tall. And to make the windows look tinted, I used a black panel behind each one, which also allowed me to build in some of the Technic bricks that attach to the beams below. I also added tiles on top of each level so they could rotate a little. And I gotta say, this was literally one of the most brain-boggling techniques I've ever done. Locking these together was actually so hard. <laughs> just kept getting taller and taller. Eventually, I had to stand on the chair because it got so tall. But finally, I got it all built up and added it to the city. I'm actually pretty happy with how this one turned out, and I'm really hoping it'll stand up against the flood. So make sure you follow for day 19. Building a Lego city in 30 days so I can flood it. Day 19. Today I wanted to build a Lego skate park. Because quite honestly, after 18 days of building, I am white. I had a place plotted out for this on the outer section that doesn't fit on the table. But when I actually flood the city with 300 gallons of water, it won't be on the table, so everything will fit. For the skate park, I wanted it to be cool and have a bunch of cool obstacles. So I started by putting down a bunch of tiles. I used my hammer to hit all the tiles into place. And I made sure to integrate some studs and plates into the tiles so I could attach the obstacles on top. Then I started building up the obstacles, starting with a half pipe. I had a little bit of experience in building skate parks because I made a fingerboard park last month, but that was at a way larger scale, and I had to scale it down to minifigs for this one. Next, I added a couple rails to grind on, and also built up a staircase so you could do tricks up and down it. And I made a sick bank using a couple tiles and a hinge, that was easy. And I wanted to give this build kind of like a cool art wall, so I built up a brick wall and printed out a custom graffiti sticker to make it look like the minifigure is actually painting. This is probably my favorite part of the whole build, because it just adds some life. I added a couple more details, and finally the skate park was finished, and I could add it into my Lego city. It's the little builds like this that kind of give you a day to relax, and also just help to add some life into the city that we're going to flood <laughs> and completely destroy. So make sure you follow for day 20. Building a Lego city in 30 days so I can flood it. Day 20. Today I wanted to build a car dealership for Lego cars. And not just any cars, supercars specifically. I had a place planned out for this right behind the prison, but since it doesn't quite fit on the table yet, we'll just move the prison for now. So I got to work building the foundation, and I had to figure out what actually goes in a car dealership. I wanted to give it a very light open feel, so I added some clear Lego windows, but also wanted it to look really posh and nice, so I used black tiles and plates for the floor. I built up a little table and a small couch to make it comfortable, and I even built a manager's office, making use of these tinted panels so they could have some privacy. I also built a couple standing desks and a car coffee station, which is always my favorite part of these builds, I just love this coffee machine design. Once the inside was done, I built up a custom roof, then all I had to do was tile in the parking lot using some
some jumper plates for minifigures to stand on, and some white tiles to separate the parking slots, and then all that was left to do was build some cars. I bought some LEGO Speed Champion supercars for this, because I didn't have time to design my own, and built those up so I could add them to the car dealership. These were actually super fun to build, and I learned a couple new techniques too. Then all I had to do was add the cars to the parking lot, and mark them for sale with a couple custom stickers. And now there's another beautiful building headed to its grave when I flood this city with 300 gallons of water. So make sure you follow for day 21. Building a Lego city in 30 days so I can flood it. Day 21. Today I wanted to build a Lego Lego store so my Lego minifigures could buy Lego in my Lego city. I know, it's a really meta idea. I had a place plotted out for this right next to my Lego Mr. Beast Burger, so I grabbed the base plate and got to work building. For the color scheme for this build, I wanted to go with white and yellow, because those are like the main two colors in Lego stores that I've been to. I also wanted to add some glass windows to the front so you could see in. To add a touch of yellow to the front of the building, I built up a Lego banner, and to get the Lego logo for the front, I just found an instruction manual and cut it out from that. And I think the outside of the build turned out super clean. For the interior, I wanted to make it look exactly like the Lego store, so I first built up a pick-a-brick wall using a bunch of snot bricks and clear studs to make it look like there's actual bricks in there. Then I started building up some shelves on the sides that I could put little Lego boxes in. I even added a couple Lego Lego sets that I stole from another Lego set in real life. It's so meta, it's blowing my mind. And then I tiled in the floor using gray plates and tiles, and built up a few different pieces of furniture like the front desk, as well as a few Lego displays I added to the front of the store. I think this turned out super good, like I'm so happy with the outside of it, it totally looks like the Lego store. I guess we'll see what happens when I flood the city with 300 gallons of water. Tomorrow I'm adding cars, so make sure you follow for day 22. Building a Lego city in 30 days so I can flood it. Day 22. Today I wanted to add Lego cars to the streets of my city so it would feel less empty. Because apart from this single taxi and the expensive cars at the dealership, there's like nothing on the roads. I bought a bunch of Lego car sets for this, so I got to work building them. The first one I built was this really generic blue car. I built up two of these cars and added them both to the city. I also built a really cool garbage truck with a recycling stand so that I could empty the garbage of the city. Obviously guys, this has to be realistic. I gotta make it as realistic as possible for the flood, you know? After that I built a cool camper van set with a bed up top and a fully furnished interior which has like a cooking stand and a table. This one was actually pretty sick. I even built some vehicles outside because Lego said not to in the instructions and I wanted to be a rule breaker. It's crazy though, I couldn't find any warnings against flooding your Lego city in here. So I guess we're good to go. <laughs> we're getting closer and closer to flooding the city with over 300 gallons of water and I'm getting more and more nervous. Like, what if it goes wrong? <laughs> what if I forget to hit record, you know? I've been building the city for 22 days and put thousands of Lego bricks into it just to see what'll happen when it floods. But I guess I'll just have to wait and find out. <laughs> for now, we have a bunch of new cars in the city and I think it looks pretty cool. Tomorrow we're starting a huge build, so make sure you follow for day 23. Building a Lego city in 30 days so I can flood. Day 23. Today I wanted to build a super mall for my Lego city with a bunch of different stores in it so I could boost the economy before the flood. I had a place plotted out for this right behind the bank, taking up four base plates in total, making this the largest build yet. So I grabbed the base plates and started building up the foundation. My plan for this build, since it was going to be so huge, is to make it a two day project. Today I'm building the outside of the mall and framing everything, and tomorrow I'll add the stores and details to the inside. So I built up some doors and windows for the front of the mall, and I made sure to make the windows face inward so when the water from the flood hits the side, it'll push the windows open. And my friend Christian actually came up with this idea. For the second floor, I attached a bunch of 16 by 16 plates, connecting them together with Technic bricks to make it really strong so I could build up the next level. Since this is a super mall, I plan to build a bunch of different shops on the top level and the bottom level and have a cool escalator going between them. But for today, I just put some tiles and plates down and I built up some simple walls with snot bricks in the front so I could attach the logos for the stores. I put them all in place in the city, added some tiles to the front and even a cool custom logo. And hey, I think it looks pretty good. And I think the glass windows will have a really cool effect when it floods. Tomorrow, I'm adding all the stores and details to the inside of the mall, so make sure you follow for day 24. Building a Lego city in 30 days so I can flood it. Day 24. Today I wanted to add stores and details to the Lego mall I built yesterday. Cause right now it's looking more empty than my bank account after making this series. So I started by building up a ton of furniture that included registers, shelves, toilets, refrigerators, counters, basically anything you'd find in a mall, right? And then I built up the first store, which was a game shop. I added some shelves and a TV and console, and also some video game weapons. There's a lot of these, so I'm gonna speed round. I built up a pet shop with some fish tanks, an ice cream store with tables to eat at. I also built up a sporting goods store and a Mr. Beast burger chain, like the one across the street. To finish off the first level, I added a water fountain and a custom Lego escalator I built using Technic bricks. I also put some mayonnaise on an escalator. <laughs> on the second floor, I built up a few more stores, like a chicken restaurant, a salad place, two clothing stores that I made with minifigure parts. I even added another brick box toy shop. And finally, a bathroom with toilets and sinks and a urinal. To finish off the inside, I built up a custom logo for each shop. I think this build turned out fantastic and it took just under two days to build. Definitely one of the bigger ones in the city. And I'm definitely gonna put a camera in here for the flood because I'm gonna have cameras all over the city when I flood it with 300 gallons of water. It's gonna be awesome, so make sure you follow for day 25. Building a Lego city in 30 days so I can flood. Day 25. Today I wanted to build a Lego aquarium for my city. That way when I flood it, the sharks and other animals can just float away into the water. The place I had plotted out for this was right behind the apartment building, so I grabbed the base plates and got to work building up the foundation with black plates. I wanted this build to look super cool and modern, so I used glass panels and made the
the front wall curve using these little hinges. Then I started building the walkthrough aquarium for the minifigures, just like the ones in real life. I added some tan pieces to look like sand, and then built up the walls using clear blue pieces to make it look like water. Then I added some sea life, like some fish, a shark, some dolphins, and even swordfish. Also added a catwalk on top so you could feed the sharks. Next, I started building up some more fish tanks, like this one, which holds a crab and uses these cool dome pieces. I even built some small habitats for like frogs and a starfish. And for some reason, I thought it'd be cool to build a polar bear enclosure, even though this is an aquarium and it doesn't really make sense. Then all I had to do was add some custom stickers and build up the roof. And the technique I used for this was so complicated, it literally took me forever to figure out. But the end result was definitely worth it because this is now my new favorite build in the city, which is why it's gonna be so sad when I have to flood it. On the other hand, it is gonna look pretty cool. So make sure you follow for day 26. Building a Lego city in 30 days so I can flood it. Day 26. Today I wanted to build the third skyscraper. My plan is to build three skyscrapers for the city, each built with a different technique so I can see which one stands up the best against the flood. For this third one, the plan was to use Technic cross beams and tie them into the walls with Technic bricks to make it super strong. So I built up the first layer of the building, making sure to put the windows facing inwards again so the water can flood through them. And I even added removable doors so I could put a camera in here when I flood it. Since this skyscraper is going to be so huge, I plan to make it into a two day project. Today I'm building the first floor in the frame and tomorrow I'll finish it off by building the walls in the second floor. I built some simple details for the first floor to make it look like a stylish lobby, including some chairs, a desk, and a model of the second skyscraper. I even built an elevator facade, and having the cross beams on the inside make it look super industrial and cool. Next, I built up all the prefabricated walls, windows, and cross beams I would need to finish this skyscraper. I attached the cross beams end to end to the top so I'd have something to build off of and put it in my city to see what it would look like. I think this build is going to be sick once it's finished, and since it takes up a whole base plate of room, it's going to be the biggest of the three skyscrapers. Tomorrow, I'm finishing the skyscraper with walls and a second story, so make sure you follow for day 27. Building a Lego city in 30 days so I can flood it. Day 27. Today I wanted to finish the Lego skyscraper I started building yesterday. I only have three days left to finish the city, so I can set it up and get ready to flood it with 300 gallons of water. So I started by building up the walls using the prefabricated sections I built yesterday, adding one layer that's two windows high, and then overlapping it with two by four bricks. I really do think this is gonna be the sturdiest of the three skyscrapers I built, because they each use a different technique, and this one has Technic cross beams, which lock in to be really, really strong. I built up the next floor and made sure to add some snot bricks to the walls so I could add billboards later. Then I started building the platform for the penthouse. I want to make the penthouse super detailed and like super fancy and nice. So I built a really nice bathroom with a bathtub, an office space up the stairs with a little kitchen under it. I even built a custom couch and a bed to make it look really nice. And then I added our character Brick because he's moving up in the world and now he lives in the penthouse at the tallest building of the city. Like I would live here. This looks sick. Then I continued building up the wall for the final couple floors. And finally, with the whole thing built up and completed, I added it into my Lego city. The inside of it with the cross beams looks really industrial and sick. And it's officially the tallest building in Lego city. Tomorrow we're building Times Square, so make sure you follow for day 28 building a Lego city in 30 days so I can flood. Day 28. Today I wanted to build Times Square in my Lego city and add a bunch of TV screens and billboards to liven it up. Cause when I flood the city with 300 gallons of water, the majority of it is going to flow right down the main road and hopefully right into the square. So I started by adding a few more buildings to my city like the Daily Bugle set I built a few months ago. I really like the set because it already has billboards and stuff on it, so it works perfectly. Then I decided to swap the Apple Store for the Helix skyscraper to make it more of a square. I also added the Lego Jazz Club set right across the street. To make Times Square look more realistic, I designed a bunch of custom decals to put on screens and TV and stuff. Then I just used black plates and tiles to build up a bunch of screens that I could attach to the buildings. Just like I built up this billboard for Crazy Kai's Brickling Store. They provided some of the parts for the city, and they also have a ton of Lego pieces in stock. You can check them out using the pinned comment, because they're pretty awesome. One of the cool things about making a Lego city is you get to basically do whatever you want with it. In my case, making it super cool and then destroying everything with massive flood, which is coming very soon, by the way. I just want to let you know that it will take a few weeks to get day 31 uploaded, because this city is absolutely massive, and I need time to set it up and flood it the right way. But it is coming, and it's going to be insane. So make sure you follow for day 29. Building a Lego city in 30 days so I can flood it. Day 29. Today I wanted to build the sidewalks and street details to make the city finally come to life. Because right now all the sidewalks look like the egg breakers outside Sam's Club. I started by adding dark gray 2x2 two two tiles to the sidewalks next to the roads before I realized I could just remove the base plates and then tile them. But hey, I was tired, okay? <laughs> so I continued adding tiles, making sure there were two at the end of each base plate that could overlap to the next one. That way when I get to the flood site and set all these up, the base plates won't all come apart and wash away. Because I'm going to flood the city with over 300 gallons of water. <laughs> it's going to be insane. I used a small strip of light gray tiles on the outside of the sidewalks, and I built in some plates and jumper plates so I could detach minifigures and other things on the sidewalks too, like fire hydrants, and these cool Lego manhole covers, which are scattered throughout the city. For the main intersection, I also built up some street lights using snot bricks and colored studs. I even added some custom street signs like Waterway Road, Creator Street, which I totally didn't steal from a modular set. No, no. <laughs> Finally, I finished building up the sidewalks, which really made the city look a lot cleaner, and I added the minifigures and cars back into it. After 29 days of building, we are so close to flooding the city, and tomorrow, I'm gonna finish it. So make sure you follow so you don't miss day 30.
building a lego city in 30 days so i can flood it day 30 today i had a short list of things to build in my city before it could be considered finished starting by making sure the side base plates would all fit since the table's a little smaller than the actual scale of the city and when i flood it all these sections are going to fit on the sides i only found a few issues like with the car dealership roof and the aquarium roof but those are pretty easy fixes i just made them a little smaller and i test fit the rest of the plates around it just to make sure next i did some landscaping around the living houses with green bricks and plates to make them snap together with technic bricks and also just be less flat this was something i really wanted to do on day six but i just ran out of time because i made so many houses that day and finally after 30 days of building stud city is now complete and we can finally flood it with over 300 gallons of water which is going to be crazy and super cool i can't wait to see what it's going to look like i just want to thank everyone who's been watching this series so far and came back every day for a new build this was a totally different new experience for me and when i started i had no idea how to build a city like i seriously hadn't built houses in years and now after all that work we finally get to flood it and see what 300 gallons of water will do to a fully built lego city and that'll be the next video i upload so make sure you guys follow so you don't miss it building a lego city in 30 days so i can flood it day 31 today i set up my city at the flood site and got everything ready for the actual flood with 300 gallons of water so i started by taking the city apart into modular sections that i can move outside to the stage and reassemble this was actually pretty easy because i spent so long actually building a city i kind of just knew where everything went without having to look at a picture so i snapped together the roads using tiles and added all the base plates to the sides and for the first time the entire city was laid out which was extremely cool to see now i know a lot of you guys are wondering how i'm actually going to flood the city with 300 gallons of water for that let me satiate your question with this $50 pool that holds, you guessed it, just over 300 gallons. And all I had to do was fill it up. My plan is to cut the side of the pool closest to the city, letting loose all the water into Waterway Road and completely flooding the entire city, which I've decided to name Stud City. Doesn't that sound like a cool name? The main question I have is, will the Legos float or will the buildings and stuff be heavy enough to withstand that much water? I really don't know, but put your votes in the comments and we'll find out. I know a lot of you were expecting the flood itself to come out right away, but now we have an actual upload date of July 15th. So make sure you follow so you don't miss it. I spent 30 days building my giant Lego city, and now I'm gonna flood it with 300 gallons of water. In three, two, one. Oh my gosh, that's insane. that it just got everywhere look at that oh my gosh man that just took everything with it check out the full video on youtube after flooding my giant Lego city, a lot of you are probably wondering, how are you going to clean that up? Well, I started with some giant plastic bins that I drilled some drain holes into so that water could leak out because a lot of the buildings were full of water and extremely wet. Then I went around and just started chucking everything in these bins, just breaking everything into a million pieces. And while it was sort of sad, it was also kind of a relief. Like I spent 30 days on this project and then months before planning it. And finally, I could just put it all in bins and resort it into my collection. There were like 12 or 13 buildings that didn't get destroyed, including the three skyscrapers, which I even tried flooding again with another pool and they just didn't topple over. Like I screwed them down and they didn't break at all it was awesome so i'm gonna keep all those buildings for a different video which involves lego destruction so i really think you guys are gonna like it and then for the pool i bought it for like 30 dollars on amazon and since there was a giant hole in it i just threw it away i just want to thank everyone who watched this entire series it means so much to me we hit a million subscribers on youtube and a million followers on tiktok during this challenge and i really want to do something like this next year where we do 30 days of building because it was just so fun this project was something i really wanted to do to see what would happen and it just it turned out so good but it wouldn't have been possible without you guys